Hello, welcome to the case study for modeling fracturing and production in unconventional reservoirs using the compaction dilation tables. So these are the objectives of this specific case study. Um, so first of all, we wanted to model the injection and production all simultaneously. And with, for this, we use the transmissibility multiplier dilation table, and we use this to match the injection. And we honor the injection rate and pumping schedule to match the bottom hole treating pressure. Once the injection was complete, we history matched the production. And for the production, we did the history match using the unloading compaction tables uh, for the flow back and the production. So this is just an image of the this, this low fidelity approach that we used in this case. So it's a pressure versus transmissibility relationship. So the pink line here is the elastic region, and you were somewhere in this region before the injection starts. So let's say you're at 6,000 PSI. Once the injection starts, the pressure will increase until you reach the dilation pressure, at which point there's going to be a sudden and rapid increase in the transmissibility for a small change in the pressure. Once the injection is complete, you're going to be left with blocks in different zones, different locations along the length of this dilation uh, line. So for example, in the areas that are right around the perforations, you'll be probably above this point here. So once the pressure starts declining, you will follow this red unloading path. And you can see with this one, the transmissibility will be retained for a much longer period of time. If you're between the green, this dot here, the green line and the red line, anywhere in between in terms of the pressure, so this green region um, a little bit further away from the perforations, then the pressure will come down the, the brown line, it'll go out to the green one, and it'll follow this one um, as the pressure declines. And then if the pressure does not reach this point, uh, the, the transmissibility will just come down the same dilation path and then go into the elastic region. So this is the approach that we've used in this case uh, to history match uh, the injection with the dilation table and then the production using the unloading curves. These are the reservoir properties. Um, we have the grid block width, the dimensions, the number of grid blocks. Um, the thickness of the reservoir and some of the fluid properties, the bubble point pressure, and also the initial reservoir pressure. In terms of uh, continuing with the reservoir properties, it is a dual permeability model, so we have natural fractures present. Uh, the matrix permeability is 1E minus 4 millidarcies, and the natural fracture permeability is slightly higher at 1.5E minus 4 millidarcies. We have here the matrix porosity and the matrix, the natural fracture porosity is, of course, very small um, as most of the fluid is going to be held in the matrix. This is the reservoir view. We have the aerial and the 3D view of the model. Um, well, one is fractured um, first. So you have that one uh, that comes online first and produced. After three months, well, two is fractured. So it's completed and uh, produced. And then after three more months after that, uh, well, three is completed um, and produced. So first we're going to talk about the injection modeling. So with this, the water is being injected at a rate of 65 barrels per minute on average for each stage. And the injection time per stage is about 100 minutes followed by a 750 minute period for a shut in between the stages just for the wire line and the plugging. The dilation table is used as the history match parameter to match the bottom hole treating pressure. So here with this, for each injection well, um, this stage, each stage has eight clusters. So each stage is about 240 feet and the cluster spacing is 30 feet. So here we have a top view of one of the wells. They have stage one and stage two. And you can see well one has 24 stages, well two has 20 stages, and well three has 19 stages. So this is just for one of the uh, wells. You can see the injection schedule match. It's gonna be matching almost perfectly because we're running on the injection rate. The pressure is what we're uh, adjusting the dilation table to match, and as you can see, the pressure is actually matching very closely um, to the historical data. Okay, so this image, this video, kind of gives an idea of the pressure and transmissibility change during the injection. So let me first play the pressure change. So what you'll see here is when you're doing the injection, the pressure is increasing and you have these planes of weakness where the pressure is able to propagate way further towards the other wells that have been drilled. So the parent well is produced and then the next the child well will start being fracked and as you can see the frackets are occurring right where these air planes of weak stress are. You can see the fracket occurs and again the wells, both wells are produced for three more months. Pressure is declining and then the third child well will be fracked soon. Um, and then you'll see the fracture hits occur uh, towards the existing two parent wells. And similar behavior will be able to be seen with the transmissibility multiplier. So you can see how the transmissibility is increasing, of course, during the injection, 
once the production happens, the transmissibility will start decreasing. And then when we frack the, the child well, the first one, you'll again see the transmissibility start increasing. Okay, so this one's been fractured, it's been produced for three more months, and then you'll see that the third well is going to be fractured here very soon. And again, you'll see the transmissibility increase um, once that does happen. And this is a side view. Um, let me go to the next slide. This is a side view of the same process. You can kind of see how the stages are being fracked one at a time. So this is the delta pressure. So the change in pressure during the injection. And on the right side, we have the, the transmissibility multiplier. And you can kind of see how each stage is being fractured one at a time um, based on the injection that's been specified. In terms of the water production statistics, um, a total of over 284,000 barrels of water were injected during the fracturing, but only 23,000 barrels, or 8.2%, uh, were recovered during the flowback. So most of the water was lost in the formation because of high capillary forces, and we were able to capture that in the simulation model. So that was the injection portion. Let's talk about the production history matching. Um, so the production modeling follows the injection modeling in a continuous fashion. And as we already saw, there's three wells, and each well comes online at a different time. So we have the unloading compaction tables that are used to model the production period. And there's three, there's three curves. We have the prop region, the uh, stimulated region, and then the unstimulated region. So um, just going back to the original plot I talked about earlier, we have the dilation curve, which is adjusted to match the injection. Then we have the stimulated region. Uh, which is an uh, area of higher permeability around the fracture, uh, higher transmissibility around the fracture, but it's, it's not as high as the prop region. And of course, the prop region is the area probably immediately around the perforations where we have the prop in, um, and that's where you can have the highest transmissibility, as well as it's going to be retained for a longer period of time as the, as the prop and holds uh, the fractures open. Okay, so this is the history match now. We're taking a look at, um, this is the history match of the first well. Um, and you can see here we have two fracture hits that occur and you can see in the water rate signature and the pressure signature where you have this first fracture hit and then the second one where you have the water spike and then same thing you see in the pressure we have the pressure spike at those two locations and you can see how um, the rates are matching and the pressure is matching very closely. So that's the frack hit from well 2 and frack hit from well 3. Um, this is well 2 and with this one there's only one fracture hit that occurs uh, from well 3. So you see the water spike and the pressure spike at this point, and the rates and the pressure is matching very well. And then this is lastly well three, where um, there are no frackets because this well came on last, but uh, just like the other cases, the rates and the pressure is matching uh, very closely. These are some of the conclusions from this case study. First of all, the CMG dilation compaction approach can be used uh, for couple injection production schemes. CMOS can be used to perform sensitivity analysis, history match, optimization, and probabilistic forecasts. And a fully coupled geomechanics and IMEX and GEM can be used for more mechanistic modeling of hydraulic fractures. However, in this case, we chose the more simple approach, uh, which gave uh, very good results. And that brings us to the end of the case study. Thank you for watching.